some of the challenges that we face when we are recruiting uh, the ladies to travel and work in Saudi Arabia is that the bad image that the country has already been portrayed, yeah? We don't have a way to contact them. So mostly it's when they contact us that we, uh, we are able to check on them. But then again, the employers, they'll be like, oh, this other, this other family is paying this much, so why should I pay this much? But then if our government is able to negotiate and make it standardized, then there will be no need to have to convince an employer to pay higher, which I believe it's doable. Um, so my name is Violet Wanchiko Karanu. I am the director of J Horizons Travel Agency Limited, uh, which is a recruitment agency accredited by the Ministry of Labor uh, through National Employment Authority. We've been in business uh, since 2014 uh, till date. Well, I got into recruitment business uh, in 2009. I was 19 years old. I was like many other youths right now, didn't have any employment. Uh, I was stuck in peer pressure and I wanted a change for myself. And I remember um, deciding that I'm gonna take a risk and travel to Saudi Arabia for work as well. And that is when I was taken to a company at the time, it was called Alwadi Recruitment. And when I got there, uh, they said I was too young, I was 19 years old, and you can only get a visa to Saudi when you're 21 years and above. So I couldn't get the job. Um, so the next day the guy called me and asked me whether I am willing to work in the office as I wait to get to my legal age to be able to travel. So that is how I started working in the recruitment uh, business. I worked in the company in the beginning I started doing as a, as a cyber attendant because he had a cyber as well. And then in the process, that is how I learned uh, how to manage the business and uh, uh, to take the candidates through the process that is required. And uh, yes, in 2014, uh, that is when I opened my own company. So some of the challenges that we face when we are recruiting uh, the ladies to travel and work in Saudi Arabia is that the bad image that the country has already been portrayed. Yeah, so there's already the stereotyping that has, hap that has happened in the media, and. Uh, to convince someone to go there has become uh, difficult. Mostly that is one of the biggest because uh, there are candidates out there who are willing to travel and they don't have job. And here there is a job opportunity, but already there is a stereotype and some of them when they travel, they tell you, oh, please don't tell my people that I traveled to Saudi Arabia. Let them know that I went to Dubai or Qatar. Yeah, so this is the main problem, the stereotyping of the country. Mm -hmm. So uh, before our candidates travel, we make sure that we take them through uh, their contract and all the documentations they have. We let them know that uh, if they have a problem, they have a number that they should call. And whenever they call us, we are able to guide them, because sometimes it's a matter of miscommunication. We are able to guide them on what to do, and uh, we are able to uh, assist them if they situation is worse, we're able to guide them on how they're going to get to the office, and then from there they'll be assisted. Mainly I'm the number one person who is contacted when they have a problem, uh, because I'm able to understand uh, where the girls are coming from. Some of them have homesick, some of them are really in distress, they're in bad hands of an, of an employer. So basically what we do is we then liaise with the office in Saudi Arabia, who then uh, is able to talk with the employer and realize where the major problems are, and then we are able to solve them and if we are not able to solve them, then we are able to move the candidate from that house to another house. Sometimes when the girls travel, they leave Kenya with their local number, the Kenyan number. So when they get there, they then change to the Saudi number, and we don't have a way to contact them. So mostly it's when they contact us that we, uh, we are able to check on them. But when they leave here, we make sure that we create a WhatsApp group for them. Uh, where they are able to communicate within themselves and also with the, one of our office staff in the group as well. So if one has a problem, they are able to get to us immediately. And in the, in the course of the group, they are able to advise each other and let, the, and let each other know how they are doing, you know, uh, motivate each other. And from time to time, we, then, we send them scripts to, uh, to keep them going. And from time to time, we conduct prayers as well. So yeah, we, I think we have a platform. We are able to follow up on them in terms of... Uh, 
we don't have a direct access to one person, but at least we have a group. Based on the salaries that we have in Kenya, I think this is a good opportunity that they have. Um, if you compare to what salaries are a housemaid is getting in Kenya, and the salary that they are going to get there, it's way much more. Also, uh, if you compare the, for example, if you convert the money that they are earning there, it's coming to around 27,000 Kenya shillings. Uh, most of the people working even in offices in big companies here don't earn that. So if you ask me, I think that's a good amount. But then when we move to the other side uh, of the country, which is Saudi Arabia, there are countries, uh, for example, Philippines, who are paid higher than we are paid. Uh, so I believe that this is where our government should come in to be able to, negoci to negotiate a better pay for our citizens. Because as much as Philippines are doing the same work that our Kenyans are doing, I think that they, we should get an equal pay, the same pay. shouldn't be that one country gets higher than the other. But then again, like in any other business, it's all about your bargaining power. We were not able to bargain a higher salary for our candidates, so it's our government who should take the initiative to go there and negotiate for a better salary for our candidates. I am able to do that, but then again, I go to my clients and they say, the whole, because it's a system, there is a uh, Musaned which is regulating all the salaries that are supposed to be paid. I'm able to tell my, my uh, partners on the other side, please negotiate for a better pay for my candidates. And they are able to do that. But then again, the employers, they'll be like, oh, this other, company, this other family is paying this much, so why should I pay this much? But then if our government is able to negotiate and make it standardized, then there will be no need to have to convince an employer to pay higher, which I believe it's doable. I believe uh, bringing change into the industry is being able to work together with the candidates themselves. Uh, as much as I want to bring change as an individual, if I don't work together with the people who are facing these challenges, there will be no way I can bring the change. Uh, most importantly, I, I want to create a, a healthy community for the candidates, uh, a community where they feel safe that they can contact each other, they feel safe that they can raise their issues, uh, they feel say that whenever they say that they have a problem, nobody is going to charge them. Yeah, I want to create a, a community where they have uh, people who come in and advise them when it comes to money, because some of them go there, they make this money, and to be honest, to some it's a lot of money when you get it in the beginning, and you don't know how to manage it, so then you get lost. We've had cases where people send their money to the country, to their families, to save for them, and uh, maybe to their husbands. And by the time they're finishing their contract, they come back to the country, the money is not there, two years has gone to waste, right? Uh, I intend to bring in people who are able to advise them on how to save their money and how to manage their money. Also to have um, therapists who are able to talk to them and take them through their journey because it's difficult. When you leave your country where you're safe, when you know, where you know how to do everything uh, by yourself, and then you go into a country where um, you're under somebody else and you're not able to roam freely, and the country has already been stereotyped, so you don't feel safe, but then when you have someone to guide you through and you have someone who is able to talk to you when you're in distress, uh, when you feel homesick, when you feel uh, challenged mentally, that's my aim, to have a team that is going to be able to help these candidates. Also, uh, when we say that we need to empower uh, women, I believe that it's women uh, who are in this age group because the people that travel to Saudi Arabia are between the age of 21 and around 45. This is the majority, majority of them are youths. So majority of the women in this age group uh, have been neglected for a while. And this is the opportunity that we have to be able to um, uplift them and show them the right way and guide them and maybe share ideas with them because some of them also have bright ideas and they just don't have a platform where they can show, share them. Also, um, I believe that we need to bring light and appreciate the countries that are offering employment to uh, our citizens as much as we know that we don't have uh, employment opportunities in the country. We need to appreciate and not so much drag them down uh, and crucify them. Let's crucify individuals, you know. If a certain employer has done a certain mistake, let's not say Saudis, or let's not say Qataris, or let's not say Emiratis. Let's go by the name of the employer. He did this, he did that, 
he deserves that, he deserves that. Because the majority of the people are the ones who are good. And also, let's learn to um, own our mistakes as well. Because some of the sufferings that we are going through are our doings and are due to our ignorance. So once we address exactly where the problem of the root is, then we are able to bring change. But if we don't find where the problem is, we will never bring change because the roots are still there. I contacted uh, Mr. Midamo because uh, I believe uh, there's, an, there's a narrative that is being taken out there. I also want to bring a, a lot of positivity into this industry as well uh, because I believe that some of the stories that have been brought out there, um, some of them are true. There are many good agencies out there who are registered by the Ministry of Labor and they follow the law as it should be. I've been one of them and many of them are, are my mentors as well.